I would like you to think about something over the course of this talk. Now, don't worry, it's not a lot. Just answer these two questions to yourself. Do you consider yourself popular, and how many friends do you have? If you answered no to the first question and came up with a number of five or ten or more in the second one, why do you think you're not popular? After all, you do have at least a few friends, enough for at least a foundation for a social circle. Does that not, is that not what popularity is? According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, popularity is defined as the quality or state of being commonly liked or approved. But this can apply to anybody, from your close family and friends to hordes of strangers, such as on social media. However, over the course of time, this definition has evolved to mean something else entirely. Now, we commonly refer to popularity as how much of an impact we have, how much praise we receive, and how many followers we have. But the type of popularity we emphasize in today's society is status, and this actually might be bad for us. To understand why, we must first make the distinction between the two types of popularity. According to Mitch Prinstein, a psychologist with a PhD in clinical psychology, there are two completely different types of popularity, likability and status. Likability is the type of popularity you find in those who are charismatic and kind. They're friendly, they make you smile. They're those who are popular regardless of whether they have hordes of followers or are physically attractive. Status-obsessed popularity is the type of popularity that probably comes to mind when the word status or popularity is mentioned. Those who can get whatever they want when they're asked for it, maybe have a lot of money. But another association may come to mind. These people may not always be nice. Although they may have words of followers, these connections are often superficial, and they may not have good interpersonal relationships. In fact, findings reveal that only 35% of people who are popular due to status are also likable. And the rest are popular, but they're unlikable. So, okay, likability is a big deal, and maybe it can help you later in life. But why does that, why, so why are we obsessed with status currently in high school? It is actually due to a combination of several factors. For one, we're changing our mindsets from that of a child to that of an adult. And we have to make sure we create a good reputation. We want people to look up to us, and status can often be evolved in creating this reputation. There's a scientific perspective too. There's a part of the brain called the ventral striatum, which is involved, which plays a major role in our brain's reward system. That surge of pleasure you feel when you see hundreds of likes on an Instagram post is actually this part of the brain working hard to release chemicals such as dopamine throughout your body and help you feel rewarded. And in adolescence, this part of the brain becomes especially activated. In fact, it is just one element of an entire motivational relevance network, according to neuroscientists such as Kristen Lindquist. But if, if we're obsessed with status right now, how does that affect our popularity later in life? Maybe it doesn't, but it does. It may seem that the popularity we have now in high school and adolescence does not affect our popularity later in life, but that is actually far from the truth. In one study done by John Coy, a psychologist at Duke University, children are ranked into five categories based on others' opinions of them. They were first asked to answer two questions about others. Who do you like the most, and who do you like the least? The five categories were accepted, children who were highly liked, rejected, who were highly disliked, neglected, who were essentially invisible, they were rarely liked or disliked, controversial, who were highly liked and disliked, and average, which was the middle of all. Later, these children were replaced with other random children to remove any existing knowledge of each other. However, after a few sessions together, the children fell back into the same categories. While participating in activities, the accepted children rose to the top and led the group, while the rejected children sat on the side and refused to participate. In fact, in the same study, researchers found that children who fell into a category in elementary school fell into the same category over five years later in high school which shows that the popularity we have in childhood and adolescence may be permanent, or at least last for an extended period of time. And it is here where popularity plays a role in our adult life. Popularity plays a big role in high school, but it plays just as big of a role, if not more, in adulthood and at work. Those who are likable can create good connections with their colleagues, and this means that they can eventually get promoted. While being status obsessed will cause you to not be liked around the office and this may cause you to be disliked, well, you're disliked. 
Take the US TV show, The Office, as an example. In that show, Jim Halpert is a likable character. He's loved by everyone around the office, and this makes him popular. In fact, this eventually allows him to get promoted to the position of manager. Dwight Schrute, on the other hand, is status obsessed. He is obsessed with getting the position of manager. But because he's not liked by the people around the office, no matter how hard he tries, he can't get this position. This is just one example of likability versus status, and it shows that likability is better, and it also shows how popularity can play a role in our adult life. So, what should you get from this talk? Well, as Bo author Bo Bennett once said, true popularity comes from acts of kindness rather than acts of stupidity. Strive to be likable rather than to be status obsessed. Now, as I said earlier, of course, we're an adolescent, we're going to be obsessed with status. But make sure that while striving for status, this doesn't come at the cost of being nice to others. And make sure you keep your good interpersonal relationships. Note that I'm not trying to warn you that if you're, like, you're not likable now, you're never going to be likable. Or if you're status obsessed now, you're always going to be status obsessed. But if you make good choices and choose likability, it will help you, both now and in the future. Thank you.